Okay, we're at uh, 813, and we're expanding more into polygons. Um, we did some the other day, and jumping in more, not just triangles and quadrilaterals, and going into pentagons and hexagons and all that, and more in a general sense. I mean, like I said, we visited some of the stuff, but now we're going into more of not just what's inside, but what's outside as well. I said I do exterior angles as well as interior angles. So let's get a start of that, and uh, I won't take too long, spend too long on this. Let's start with the number of sides for all these, and then we'll do the rest. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Then we'll um, talk about them as we go. I'll actually start at the top, then I'll go toward the bottom of the page and work my way back up. Okay, let's name these guys so you know all the names. First of all, triangle, quadrilateral. I'm giving it the most basic, well, quadrilateral, most basic uh, name for it. We know the most specific one for that is a square, but just a four-sided shape in general is quadrilateral. Five-sided is called a pentagon. Um, there's actually a building called the pentagon, and it's, lo and behold, it's a shape of a pentagon from the top down, um, looking from a helicopter view. This is a hexagon. Um, I'm trying to think of like shapes that are like things that use these shapes as well. I don't, I don't know if I'll really get into any. Um, what is this one called? It's a septagon? Septagon? I might be wrong on that, actually. And now they think of it. it might be a heptagon or something. Septagon? September? Suddenly I got so screwed up on that one. I'm, I'm actually not sure what that is anymore. It might be a septagon. Let's call it. <laughs> Oh shoot, that would suck if I'm wrong. Um, septagon, septagon, is that right? I don't know. Anyway, this is an octagon, and um, you see these in stop signs. This one doesn't really look like it. You, if you tilt your head a little bit, so this is top and down, here's your stop. If you look at it like that, that's what stop signs look like. Uh, it's called a nonagon. Kind of a weird name. And this is a decagon, ten sided shape. We use 12-sided shapes as well later. They're called dodecagons, um, but don't worry about that right now. Okay, um, and we're going to look at the interior angle sums. Uh, we did this, like I said the other day, but I want to look at the individual angles as well. Um, not actually written on this paper, I guess, so maybe we'll change that. I think I want to. Let's, let's just do interior angles in general. I don't want to do the sums, just the actual angles, but I do want to do the sums of the exterior angles. Because later, I do have the individuals. I probably could have written this sheet better. So, um, pardon me for <laughs> pardon me for that. I kind of did a rush job on it. But let's, you know, I'm going to go down the page now, and we'll talk about interior next year, and then we'll come back up as we do that. Because um, maybe I'll get the sums first, and then I'll go back up and do this later. Okay, a regular polygon. Remember, that's what we're talking about now, regular polygons. And I gave the uh, definition in the other video, but a regular polygon is a polygon. So you have to know the definition of a polygon with sides and angles. With all congruent sides and angles. So if you think about it, a regular polygon with three sides, what's a three-sided shape? First of all, that's a triangle that has all congruent sides and all congruent angles. Well, that's called an equilateral triangle. So very specifically, a triangle that is a, a regular triangle, if you want to call it that, is also known as an equilateral triangle. So a regular polygon with four sides, remember, a four-sided shape is a quadrilateral. A regular one has all congruent um, sides and all congruent angles. And that would be a rhombus, but if it has all congruent angles, then all of them are 90 degrees as well. So that would actually be a square. Like I said, that's the... Whenever I call something the most specific, in this case, like a, it's the most specific type of quadrilateral, it's a square because it has everything congruent and uh, there's, there's nothing screwed up with it. Um, so a regular pentagon would have all congruent sides and all congruent angles that makes sense. Um, the, you, you can have a, excuse me, you can have a pentagon that looks like that, for instance. One, two, three, four, well, one, two, three, four, four, five sides. One, two, three, four, five sides. So that's a pentagon as well, 
but it doesn't have everything congruent. Okay, interior angles are the angles... I'll just say the angles which make up the polygon. And by that I mean it's the ones that are on the inside, the ones that you would actually talk about normally. They're the conventional polygon. They are the conventional angles that we talk about. So these guys right here, these are my interior angles. Okay. So in a seven, in seven, there are seven interior angles. There should be. That's how it's just going to work. Normally you just call them angles, but now we got to be specific with interior versus exterior. Start using a different color. Exterior angles are outside, and like I said, I think, uh, well actually no, this time I didn't define it last time, but here, so here I'll define it. Bear with me here. Let's say I have this triangle. If I take a side and extend the side outward, like that, just straight up like that. Here's my interior angle, remember? My exterior angle will be this guy. So it's the angle that's made on the outside of the triangle, but it's coming from a straight line that's made outside of the triangle. So for instance, my exterior angle is not going to be this whole thing right here. It's just made from one of the sides in the polygon itself. So this will be my exterior angle. Here's another exterior angle. Um, wait, did I do that right? Let's draw it from here. Here's another exterior angle. And here's another exterior angle. So these are three exterior angles in a triangle. And you're actually going to see an image down below. On your paper, you probably already see it. Here's an exterior, here are my exterior angles in my square. So they're drawn, extended out from the side. There should only be as many as the number of sides there are. So just, just continue going. Let's say for a nonagon, they all look like this. Okay. So you'll see a pattern here before I actually define it and before I, before I actually expand it in problems. You'll see that as I increase my number of sides, so when I started with a triangle, notice how big my exterior angles got and how small my interior angles were. When your shape gets bigger like a nonagon, notice how much smaller the exterior angles get and notice how much bigger the interior angles get. Okay, they get more obtuse. They become greater than 90. Well, after a square, they become greater than 90. But as your interior angles get bigger, your exterior angles get smaller because their relationship is that they're supplementary. So that's what I'm going to write in the definition here. It's the angles that are outside the polygon supplementary to the interior angles. If this is my interior angle, this is my exterior angle. Interior plus exterior always equals 180. Or if you want to figure out an interior angle, You'll take 180 and subtract your exterior angles, etc. So we'll work on them that way. So exterior angles are angles outside the polygon, supplementary to interior angles. Okay. Uh, now I have a statement. Let's fill in the blanks. In regular polygons, now remember what a regular polygon is, all congruent sides and angles, you can divide the sum of the interior angles by the number of sides of the polygon to find the blank of each interior angle. Okay, now there are two different words I'm going to put in here. Uh, let's just go and do it now instead of later. Put measure or degree. Should probably really be measure because uh, the measure is in degrees, but that's okay. Um, let's make this sentence make sense, and I'll go back up in a second. In a regular polygon, so let's look at the square because I know you know that angle measures a, a square. Square is 90 degrees each. Okay. I divide so. So it says you can divide the sum of the interior angles by the number of sides. If I take the sum of the interior angles, that means take all of the degree measures of the interior angles and add them up. 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90. That's 90 plus 90 is 180. Plus 90 is 270. Plus 90 is 360. Okay. So 360 degrees inside the square. Or the, uh, yeah, the square because it's a regular four-sided shape. Regular quadrilateral. 
So if I take 360, um, and the reason why this is important, by the way, is because you are going to figure out the sum through a formula, and then you'll figure out the measures. Um, I'm taking the square first because I said we can figure these out now because we know. In fact, I should have said triangle because we know triangle is 180. Sorry, let's start with the triangle. Let's go back. I take a triangle, 180 degrees. I know the angle's out up to 180. And I divide it by the number of sides of that shape, which is 3. So if I do 180 over 3, I will find the measure of each interior angle. So 180 over 3 is 60. So each of these, which we know, you know which you know, but each of these are 60 degrees in this equilateral triangle. Okay? So the same thing goes for the square. Like I said, if this was 360 on the inside, if I divide that by 4, then I'll get the measure of each individual angle, which is 90. 360 over 4 is 90. So all these are 90 degrees. Um, so what we're going to do in a second, now we already did this table, so I'm actually not going to spend time talking about it, but I'm going to fill out a table that we filled out in the last lesson, and then I'm going to um, say these degree measures, and we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, by the way, the back side of this has practice problems. It's actually going to be up to you to figure out to do those practice problems if you weren't in class doing it. Because I'm only spending time on the front side, making sure we understand the front. The back are practice, and there's homework that's equivalent to the practice. Um, maybe I'll look at it really quickly. I just need to, I need to watch my clock. I need to finish at 8.20. Okay, a five-sided shape. Let's, let's go down here. Uh, in a three-sided shape, sum of the interior angles of the polygon is 180 degrees. In a four-sided shape, it's 360. We concluded last time that if you add 180 to each, um, each new side that you give, so let's say I have a quadrilateral, and if I add a triangle to it, then I'm adding 180 degrees to it. This is also a pentagon. Well, I didn't really erase it right, but see, that's also a pentagon right there. It's one, two, three, four, five sides. So that's how you think about it, and that's how you look at it. So plus 180 is 540 degrees, plus 180 is 720, 900, etc. This is something that was done in the last section, so if you have any more questions on it, I'm, I really am revisiting some stuff here. Um, and we figured out a 12-sided shape was 1800, even though we're not talking about it. Now the formula that we found out for this, using these using these um, these variables here, if I want to find the degree, this this degree, the sum of the interior angles, that is equivalent to taking our number of sides, like three, subtracting two from our number of sides. So three minus two would be one, four minus two is two, etc. And then we'd multiply that by 180. That would give us the degree measure of the interior of the sum of the interior angles. So I take three minus two, which is one. I multiply by one eighty, I get one eighty. Four minus two is two. Multiply two by one eighty, I get three sixty. Five minus two is three. Multiply three by one eighty, I get five forty, etc. So the formula is d equals one eighty. You multiply one eighty by the number of sides n. Okay, number of sides minus two. So it's important. You have to do n minus 2 first before you multiply by 180. Or as long as you don't just do it times n, you have to do it times 2 as well. So if I said if we have a 6,000-sided shape, which I don't know how to draw that, you say what is the sum of the measure of the interior angles? Well, it'll be, uh, be 6,000 minus 2 times 180. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind really quickly. So let's say you didn't know 6 yet, but you knew the formula. And we said, what's the degree measure of a 6-sided shape? Take 6, subtract 2, you get 4. Take 4 times 180, you might have to use a calculator, but you get 720. Okay? Now, what if the question was, what is the measure of each interior angle, of each interior angle, not the sum, because the sum is adding up all the interior angles, but what's the measure of each of them in a regular hexagon? So first of all, that's a six-sided shape. Second of all, in a regular hexagon, regular means all of the angles are congruent. So in a regular hexagon, you have six congruent angles. So the question being, what is the measure of each individual angle? You would take the sum that you found out, which is 720, 
Okay. So you get 720 as your sum of your six angles, and you divide your six angles by six. So 720 divided by six, use a calculator, uh, that should be 120. So the measure of each interior angle in your regular hexagon, like up here, this hexagon, all of these are 120 degrees. Okay, So that's how we're actually going to figure these out right here. These interior angles, see that's what I meant to say over here. I didn't want to say some, just the angles themselves. Each of these are 120. They add up to 720, but each are 120. Let's do the same here. So here we know it's 60. It's 180 divided by 3. Remember what I said over here. This is, this is how we figured that out. Um, to find the measure of each interior angle, you divide the sum of the interior angles by the number of sides. So I took 20 divided by 3. Take 360 divided by 4, we get 90. Okay. In a pentagon, it would be 540 divided by 5. Now, not all of these are going to be um, integers. This one is. It's just it's it's still not very uh, easy number to look at. 108 degrees. So all of these are 108. Like I said, not all these will be integers. I need to make sure that's a septagon. <laughs> um, I I feel I feel like that's right, but then I feel like that's wrong at the same time. I feel like I say another word whenever I mention it. I'm gonna Google that really quickly. See if a septagon's a real word. Heptagon. Okay, I was right. It was a heptagon. Heptagon. If you say septagon, I'm not gonna be. I know what you mean. Heptagon sounds weird anyway. So seven-sided shape. Take 900, and remember how you can get that. If it says find the total measure, you take 7 minus 2, which is 5, multiply it by 180, you get 900. Now you take 900, divide it by 7. This one I actually don't know off the top of my head, and it's not going to be a clean number, so I'm going to start whooping up this computer calculator. That's 128.6 about, so that's a weird one. I admit. It's like 128.57, we'll just take 128.6. Octagon will be 1080 divided by 8. At this point, I don't mind if you start using a calculator. That's 135 degrees. Okay, so you notice these start to get bigger. Nonagon is uh, 1260 divided by 9. Okay. That's 210. Okay, and then finally, 14, four, whoops, I'm sorry, that shouldn't be 210, that doesn't sound right. Um, 1260 divided by 9, there we go, 140, I'm not sure where, where I got 210 there, I was doing, using the calculator, I don't know what I typed. And finally, this will be 1440 divided by 10, it's not much bigger than 9 apparently, it's 144. You should know that one. Okay, I only have 8 minutes left, so I'm just going to stick with the front side. Um, exterior angle sums. First, we're going to figure out the exterior angles, then we'll come back up. Sum of exterior... Okay, uh, this should not say sum of exterior angles. This should just say measure of exterior angles. So, like I said, I screwed this up a little bit. And I do apologize for that. We'll, we'll have to figure out a different way to cope with that. Exterior angles of the polygon. So, I just mean each exterior angle this time. Because I want these numbers to vary down here. Because I kind of want a formula for it. Um, let's actually start with the formula. Remember what an exterior angle is. It's the angle that's supplementary to the interior angles. So what is this angle measure if this one is 60? Well, you take 180, because it's a straight line, subtract 60, you get 120. So in a triangle, it's 120 because of that subtraction. Like I said, this um, this worksheet could have been better constructed, and I really do apologize for the uh, mess that I made of it, because you have to come up and down your sheet, and that kind of sucks. Um, in a square, in a, because I'm talking about regular ones here, by the way, in a regular polygon, this is 90 degrees. Ni 180 minus 90 is 90. Okay. Now you'll notice these go down. Um, I'll do 180 minus 108. So I'm taking 180, subtracting it from these numbers. Does that make sense? Okay, 180 minus 108 is 72. 180 minus 120 is 60. 
180 minus 128.6 is 51.4. <laughs> Excuse me. 120 minus 135 is 45. 180 minus 140 is 40. And 180 minus 144, I'm looking ahead, is 36. So we'll get 40 and 36. Um, I'm going to ignore the, well, yeah, I'm going to ignore that one for now. Okay, how do I find E? I take 180 and subtract N. No, I'm sorry, not N. I subtract, let's do that again, 180. I take my degree measure, my D, my sum of my interior angles, divided by N. Okay, so make sure this makes sense. D is your sum of your angle measures. So let's say it's 180. So I won't do 180 minus 180 here. I do 180 minus 180 over the number of sides. So 180 minus 60, 180 over 3. Okay, and then that gives me 60. So 180 minus 60 is 120. That's where I get that. Okay, so I want you to look at the bottom really quickly. We, should, we could have just done it here again. I'll make these 120. I want us to find out the sum of the the sum of the exterior angles. So these are all 90, and these are all 72. You're going to recognize a pattern with these. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. If I take all my 120s and add them up, what do I get? 120 plus 120 is 240, plus 120 is 360. So in a triangle, the sum of my exterior angles is 360. In a square, 90 plus 90 is 180, plus 90 is 270, plus 90 is 360. So I get 360. In a pentagon, 72 plus 72 is 144, plus 72 is 216, plus 72 is 288, plus 72 is 360, so I get 360. Hopefully you're noticing a pattern now. If you take the sum of your exterior angles, let's do this kind of a quicker way. Let's multiply by, by instead of adding. I just wanted you to check that out and make sure you added. Let's do six-sided shape. 60 times the number of sides, six. 60 times six is 360. If it's 1.4 times seven, we, we rounded, but it'll be around 360. 8 times 45 is 360. 9 times 40 is 360. 10 times 36, as you know, is 360. The sum of your exterior angles always adds up to 360. So because I have a little bit of time, I want to see if we can do a problem on the back with that so you get how all of these connect. Okay, All of these will add up to 360 when you add them up, the exterior angles. So, assuming you understand that stuff, Assuming that makes sense, I'm going to go to the next page and find a problem that talks about exterior angles. Okay, well these do, uh, okay, the first one does. Gerardo drew a, poly, a regular polygon that had exterior angles measuring 40 degrees. How many sides did his polygon have? What is the name for this polygon? So exterior angles are 40 degrees, and this is a regular polygon. So let's go and look back here. If I have something with exterior angles of 40. Now this isn't 40, but let's pretend like it was. If I have exterior angles here that are 40, 40, 40, etc. Okay. If I add up all of the 40s, I get 360. So in other words, if I take 40 and multiply it by something, I get 360. So 40 times what equals 360? Or better yet, 360 divided by 40 equals what? Because whatever that number is, that is going to tell you the, um, hang on a second, I'm going to go back. If you take 360 divided by 40, that will tell you the measure, wait, did I say that right? Let's see, 40, da, 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 360 divided by 40, uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm out. Okay, sorry about that. So if I take 360 divided by 40, that gives me my n, my number of sides in my polygon. 
So I have a nine-sided regular polygon here. 40 told me what each exterior angle was. If I take nine forties, I get 360 because the sum of the exterior angles always equals 360. I hope that makes sense there. So 40 times 9 is 360. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is the name for this polygon? Well, this is a nonagon. And super, oh. and super quickly, I wanted to just say, to get the interior angles, it's 180 minus 40, which is 140. And we have that all over here. Okay, so you guys are about to pile in, so i got to hang up. Um, hope it makes sense. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. I'm sorry I could not do the back with you. Hopefully you were in class to do it. Otherwise, ask up.